for the next few lectures, we shall look at the hydrogen molecule ion, possibly the simplest uh, chemical species that we can think of with only one electron and two nuclei, both of which have a charge of plus one. The study of hydrogen molecule ion using the linear combination of atomic orbitals of the individual uh, hydrogen atoms as constituents will give us some basic indicators on how to proceed for the larger, for the study of the larger molecular systems including many electrons and the next important species for example, the hydrogen molecule itself which has two electrons and with two electrons of course, it brings in a paradigm shift in quantum chemistry that is it brings in the electron correlation effects. In hydrogen molecule ion, the correlation effects are absent. What we have is one electron shared between, uh, shared by the two nuclei and we have to start with the classical picture of assigning them the, the coordinates and an approximate geometry and then solve the Schrodinger equation for the geometry and vary the solution as a function of the nuclear geometry. This is well within the born oppenheimer approximation. So, let us start looking at the problem and also the method of solutions. Uh, when we talk about the hydrogen molecule ion as uh, H 2 plus at infinite separation of the two nuclei, we have a species H A plus H B plus a proton or H A plus plus H B the other hydrogen atom and this proton. So, the wave function that we can construct for solving this problem and using the Schrodinger equation try and obtain solutions for the energies. Must keep this in mind that when the distance of separation between the two nuclei uh, is very large that the wave function becomes sort of the 1 s electron wave function for the ground state of the electron and the 1 s electron is uh, such that that is it is with either one of the hydrogen atoms. Therefore, it is possible for us to consider a molecular wave function as a linear combination of the uh, 1 s electron in atom A and the 1 s electron in atom B at infinite separations, but as they come together we have to worry about the linear combination coefficients and see how these two things contribute uh, the in proportion. Also, if we just draw the picture of the hydrogen molecule ion in a classical sense, I do it asymmetrically for obvious reasons that uh, we do not know what the uh, electron position or the electron uh, uh, cloud, how it is distributed and so on. So, let us keep the two nuclei and the electron and the nuclei at a separation of R A B with the electron with respect to this, this distance being R A and this distance being R B. Okay. So, this gives us a picture of what are the types of what I mean what is the coulombic interaction and uh, the kinetic energies and so we can write the Hamiltonian. As I mean using the born oppenheimer approximation we do not have to worry about the nuclear motion and now you can also see that the molecular orbital that we write down here phi 1 s a and phi 1 s b uh, distinguishes A and B as two different nuclei, but in principle both nuclei being identical, we do not have any reason whatsoever to choose C 2 to be different from C 1. So, one uh, obvious choice would be 
to write a molecular wave function psi m o as c times phi 1 s a plus or minus phi 1 s b since the probabilities are related to the square of the coefficients c 1 square and c 2 square. That is the probability of finding the electron in the 1 s orbital of the hydrogen atom a is of course, c 1 square and the probability of finding the electron in the 1 s orbital of uh, atom b, the hydrogen atom b is c 2 square and with these two atoms being identical electronegativity, I mean there is no reason why c 1 square should be different from c 2 square. Therefore, at the most we would expect for real coefficients c 1 to be plus or minus c 2. So, this is a possible choice. Please remember this is the proposal. With this proposal, we can impose the condition uh, that we calculate the energy or we solve the, uh, uh, the uh, Schrodinger equation. But here, there is nothing to solve the Schrodinger equation because we have already chosen the wave function. Therefore, given that this is the wave function with the constant c, which is a normalization constant essentially, because all that you would do is to make sure that the psi m o square, absolute square d tau is 1 in order for the c's to be the probabilities, uh, to be to have the probability interpretation. There is nothing to solve here, we only have to calculate the energies. Okay. On the other hand, if you do not worry about the c's being equal, but you insist that the c's be different to start with, then the Schrodinger equation can be solved with these two coefficients c 1 and c 2 as a 2 by 2 matrix as follows. So, if I have to write psi m o as c 1 phi 1 s a plus c 2 phi 1 s b, then I can say that this has to be solved with h psi m o is equal to e psi m o and obtain coefficients c 1 and c 2. It is no surprise that when you do that, you will find the values of c 1 and c 2 to be plus or minus uh, of each other, c 1 is equal to plus or minus c 2. So, it does not matter which way you do, you solve this as a 2 by 2 matrix problem for example, because the Hamiltonian has uh, the interactions uh, between the nucleus and the electron and the electron kinetic energy and what you have is h c 1 phi. 1 s a plus c 2 phi 1 s b is equal to e c 1 phi 1 s a plus c 2 phi 1 s b. And therefore, uh, to obtain the coefficients, we would try to integrate this with phi 1 s a on the left hand side, uh, all of this d tau and we will write the same thing integral of phi 1 s a with all of this d tau or you can do the integration with phi 1 s b. Uh, the same thing that is h this particular quantity h is to be put in here all of that d tau and that should be equal to the same thing phi 1 s b here and uh, all of this. d tau since I made the mistake, I will make the same mistake here in coloring, but all of this times d tau. So, you have two equations involving c 1 and c 2 and one can solve this as a matrix problem, but what you would see is that the c 1 and c 2 will turn out to be equal. So, it does not matter which way we proceed. So, let us stay with the physically reasonable choice namely that psi m o is c times phi 1 s a plus phi 1 s b. 
obviously we are assuming that the 1s electron orbital energy is so low compared to the 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, etcetera that in the ground state the molecular orbital has contributions only from the 1s orbital. Okay. It does not have any other uh, orbital contributing to this linear combination. Okay. Now, how do we obtain the c which is uh, the normalization constant? We have to impose the condition namely psi m o square d tau is equal to 1, which implies that we do this namely c square phi 1 s a plus phi 1 s b multiplied by phi 1 s a plus phi 1 s b d tau is equal to 1. Now, please remember that phi 1 s a associates the electron with this atom. The electron has a coordinate say r 1, 3 coordinates r 1 x, r 1 y or uh, 1 z if you one electron. So, we write it as r 1 and the nucleus has the coordinates uh, R A and H B has the coordinates R B. Okay. Then, then you see that phi 1 s A is of R 1 with respect to this and phi 1 s B is going to be the distance from this nucleus. This R 1 is essentially, this is R 1 R A therefore, this R A is going to be the difference between these two vectors. The same position is going to be the difference between these two vectors when you say phi 1 s b. Therefore, the two orbitals are centered on two different nuclei. So, there is no reason why the integral that takes the joint uh, functions phi 1 s a and phi 1 s b inside the integral there is no reason why it should go to 0 or it should uh, uh, vanish. So, in doing this we come up with this additional quantity namely c square the first integral is phi 1 s a phi 1 s a d tau which is obviously the normalization of the 1 s inter wave function associated with the atom A and therefore, this is equal to 1 plus the integral phi 1 s b phi 1 s b d tau which is also the normalization integral for the 1 s b the 1 s orbital uh, of the, the b atom b the electron in the atom b plus twice the integral phi 1 s a phi 1 s b d tau where both 1 s a and 1 s b are centered on two different atoms and therefore, this is not generally 0 this is a 1 electron 2 center integral okay. 2 center 1 electron integral and this is known as the overlap integral. S A B. Now, obviously, S A A is equal to S B B is equal to 1. If you wish to associate this with the previous lecture on variational method in choosing basis functions which are not necessarily orthogonal and therefore, the Hamiltonian matrix containing the overlap integrals of this various uh, basis functions here is the first case that one has to calculate the overlap integral. Okay. The process of calculating the overlap integral is a separate process we will, we will not worry about it in this lecture. In one of the examples I would use the right coordinate system and probably go through a textbook example of how to calculate the overlap integral using what are known as the elliptic coordinates okay. calculated usually. an elliptic coordinate system.
but instead of doing that here, let us proceed with the analysis and come up with some answers for the hydrogen molecular ion energy and the hydrogen molecular ion orbitals. Let us try and understand the qualitative features first and then we go to the quantitative uh, evaluation of these orbital uh, uh, wave function integrals and so on. Okay. So, we need to therefore calculate the psi m o integral square d tau. We need to put that as c squared times you recall that there are two unit integrals and twice the overlap integral. So, it is 2 plus 2 s and that should be equal to 1 s is s a b. Therefore, c is equal to 1 by square root of 2 into 1 plus s a b. Okay. This is because we chose the combination psi m o to be c 1 phi 1 s a plus phi 1 s b. Okay. We choose the plus. Okay. If we have to take the other linear combination psi m o, let us call this as the plus combination and we will call this as the minus combination. Then you have c 1, uh, if you have phi 1 s a minus phi 1 s b, then the uh, c 1 you call this as plus and this is minus, then you see that c 1 minus will be by exactly the same argument will be root 2 into 1 minus s a b the overlap integral. Therefore, we have the wave functions. Let us choose the plus 1 for the rest of the calculation and we can do the same thing for the minus later. So, we will choose that as square root of 1 by root 2 into 1 plus s a b phi 1 s a plus phi 1 s b. And uh, we shall calculate the energy for this molecular orbital psi m o plus as the integral psi m o plus the Hamiltonian psi m o plus d tau. Okay. So, this is uh, the average value that we have to calculate because we have already chosen the wave function to be psi m o plus all that we can do is to calculate the energy and any other property that we need to worry about. And the process is again uh, fairly straightforward. Some interesting things happen. So, let us look at the process. So, now what is a Hamiltonian? Let us go back to the picture. I okay. will write the Hamiltonian here and then copy it back to the bottom. Let us uh, choose a slightly different color, okay, it is okay. let us do that. So, the Hamiltonian here if you look at it uh, in the born oppenheimer limit or the approximation that we have, the nuclei do not move, we will use the clamped nucleus approximation. The kinetic energy is due to the electron uh, only and therefore, what you have is the h is given by minus h bar square by 2 m e, the del r 1 square which is the, the three derivatives dou square by dou r 1 x square and r 1 y square and so on. Okay. This is the kinetic energy term p square by 2 m e and then we have the potential energy which is uh, a sum of three terms namely the electron nucleus A coulombic potential energy attraction, electron uh, nucleus B coulombic potential energy again attraction and the nucleus A, the nucleus B repulsion potential energy. So, we have three terms namely minus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught. The attraction is 1 by R A plus 1 by R B and we have the nuclear nuclear repulsion energy which is plus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a b. Okay. So, we will just copy this back here and start looking at the solution.
Hamiltonian h is minus h bar square by 2 m e del r 1 square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by r a r a plus 1 by r b plus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a b. Okay. So, let me switch back to the color. Okay. So, that is a Hamiltonian. Therefore, the average energy E or the expectation value E for the state psi m o plus is going to be because there is a psi star psi the normalization constants appear as 2 into 1 plus S A B outside and then you have the integral phi 1 S A plus phi 1 S B times within this integral we have the Hamiltonian minus h bar square by 2 m e del r 1 square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught into 1 by r a plus 1 by r b plus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a b all of which acting on the same wave function phi sorry the same wave function phi uh, 1 s a plus phi 1 s b. Okay. So, this is one long integral the wave function the Hamiltonian acting on the wave function. Now, if we look at the a and b we see some symmetry here because the label a and b are arbitrary the labels are arbitrary and therefore, this Hamiltonian can be simplified further. So, what I would do is before we proceed uh, to simplify this equation let me pass for a break and then in a few seconds we will come back, but this is the quantity that we need to calculate and uh, when you have psi m o minus you will do exactly the same calculation except 1 minus S A B phi 1 S A minus phi 1 S B phi 1 S A minus phi 1 S B is the other uh, energy average energy or the expectation energy for the other molecular state. So, we need to look at both of them uh, let us do that after we pass for a short break. Okay. We will come back in a few seconds. Okay. So, let us uh, now look at the integral more carefully term by term. The first term that I would like to look at is see you look at this there is two terms here and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 here and the 2. So, there are 16 terms if you expand them algebraically, but a lot of them are equal or very similar. So, we will see them that similarity now. Let us take the first one phi 1 s e a and the Hamiltonian minus h bar square by 2 m e del r 1 square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by r a and phi 1 s a. Let us take the first term. So, we leave the constants out, but the first one that we are looking at is phi 1 s a minus h bar square by 2 m e del r 1 square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or e phi 1 s e d tau. Quite obviously, this is the uh, electron in the hydrogen atom A, the kinetic energy of the electron and the potential energy of the electron with respect to the nucleus A. Therefore, this is exactly the ground state energy for the electron in the 1 s orbital. Uh, 
of atom A. So, uh, if I have to follow the notation that I use in my uh, notes, uh, I would call this, uh, well, uh, it is um, E 1 s. Okay. So, that is the first term. The next term that I would like to look at is phi 1 s a. So, we, since we started with phi 1 s a and we have looked at part of it, let us complete the rest of it namely phi 1 s a minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or b phi 1 s a d tau. Okay. This if you look at carefully the electron you are uh, looking at the or b is this and this is the a nucleus. The charge density of the electron in that region phi 1 s a phi 1 s a divided by a distance and therefore, you can look at this as the coulombic interaction energy or a coulombic integral for the electron with respect to this nucleus. Okay. So, what you have is a, this integral is called the Coulombic integral. In that a classical limit you can see this as a charge density divided by the distance of the electron from a charge center. Therefore, you have this as a Coulombic integral and the notation is that it is called the J. Okay. We will write that as J and then we will sum it up. Now, uh, that is with respect to phi 1 s a and the last term that we have is the uh, term namely phi 1 s a e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a b phi 1 s a d tau and this is a straightforward nuclear uh, nuclear repulsion term because the integral d tau is an integral over the electron coordinates, the positions of the electron coordinates and uh, the r a b does not depend on the electron coordinates, it is the internuclear separation. So, this is uh, given that the phi 1 s a phi 1 s a integral itself is normalized, this is nothing other than the nuclear, uh, nuclear electron repulsion energy 4 pi epsilon naught or a b. Okay. Uh, maybe I should uh, make sure that yeah, with the minus sign I will call it as j, it is fine. So, this is uh, basically 1 by r a b times that charge. The uh, integral, uh, the, the, the d tau does not contain any uh, variable from the nuclear positions. Therefore, this is a simple additional term. Okay. Now, that is as far as the phi 1 s a on uh, this whole thing is concerned. I have only taken the phi 1 s a. Now, we have to do the same exercise with phi 1 s a everything and phi 1 s b. Okay. So, let us write this the remaining the next set uh, with the phi 1 s a would be phi 1 s a minus h bar square by 2 m e del r 1 square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a we will just keep that term, but then put in phi 1 s b d tau. Okay. This is also straightforward. You remember that when you put the Hamiltonian operator between the two wave functions, the Hamiltonian operator can act on the function on the right hand side to give you whatever the uh, uh, in this case of course, the energy but it can also act on the left side because the Hamiltonian is a Hermitian operator. And if you think of the Hamiltonian acting on the function on the left hand side, you have 
nothing other than H acting on phi 1 s a. This is the H of the electron in the 1 s uh, orbital of atom 1 and therefore, this will still give you E 1 s times phi 1 s a. Therefore, this integral will become the integral E 1 s phi 1 s a phi 1 s b beta, which if you remember E 1 s is a constant the 1 s electron energy, it is nothing but E 1 s times the integral phi 1 s a phi 1 s b and therefore, this is E 1 s times the s a b, okay. as simple as that. Okay. Next, the integral that we are still left with, with the first term phi 1 s a uh, or the following namely minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or b phi 1 s b beta. Now, there is no classical interpretation for a quantity like this which involves the electron centered at one nucleus that is the uh, centered at one atom phi 1 s a and the wave function with the coordinate with the center at another nucleus and the 1 over r. Okay. There is no, uh, this is, uh, this does not have any classical interpretation and it is called exchange integral. It is purely a quantum mechanical term integral due to the fact that we took the linear superposition of wave functions and put the Hamiltonian and calculated it. The linear superposition is a quantum mechanical idea and this integral is a quantum mechanical quantity. This is called exchange integral and the usual notation for that is k. Okay. And the last term with phi 1 s a on the left hand side is of course, the minus e square sorry plus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a b phi 1 s b d tau. Again you remember that r a b does not contain any coordinates of the electron uh, in it and therefore, this integral is essentially this constant uh, coming out r a b and the integral phi 1 s a phi 1 s b d tau which is e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a b times s. Okay. So, what we have done in this exercise, let us collect all the 8 uh, quantities that we have with phi 1 s a here, okay. phi 1 s a. Let me uh, do a little more messy thing here. Let us put the phi 1 s a here and I have taken everything all of this and I have taken phi 1 s a and phi 1 s b. Those are the 8 quantities that we have calculated so far and the answer was the sum namely E 1 s plus j plus k, let us write that E 1 s plus j plus or a b this term. Then we had E 1 s s a b and we had k and we had E square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a b s. So, these are the 5 results that we got. Now, what is left over is the same integration process that needs to be carried out with the quantity phi 1 s b here, okay. everything here and everything here phi 1 s a plus phi 1 s b. So, exactly 8 more terms need to be calculated. Now, what is the difference between a and b? That is your choice and my choice. I mean if I had to switch the a and b around, how are we going to get any different result from what we already got? Therefore, by looking at the symmetry of the whole thing, right away I can say I am going to get twice the result the moment I put in the phi 1 s b and calculate this result. I am going to get exactly the same answer as I got for phi 1 s a and therefore, the answer is 
exactly twice and that two and this two will sort of cancel each other. So, what do we have therefore, as the energy? This is true because the nuclei are identical. So, the final answer therefore, for the average value E psi m o plus is going to be 1 by 2 times 1 plus s into 2 times E 1 s plus j plus k plus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught or A B into 1 plus s plus E 1 s times s. Okay. So, this will simplify to 2 goes away and the 1 plus s can be cancelled with the E 1 s term and plus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a v that also has the 1 plus s cancelling and what is left over is j plus k divided by 1 plus s. Okay. Let us see. Yeah. So, that is all we have. The integrals j and k are both negative. Uh, e 1 s is also negative. Please remember that is minus 13.6 electron volts for the hydrogen atom, the ground state 1 s electron energy. S is a positive uh, quantity, the overlap integral because both pi 1 s a and pi 1 s b, the 1 s wave functions are positive everywhere. Therefore, the product of this and the integral of that uh, cannot be negative. So, you have a small positive quantity, you have negative quantities, you have E 1 s which is a negative quantity. And the only thing that contributes positively here is the E square by 4 pi epsilon naught or A B. And therefore, you see as R A B changes, you are going to have uh, varying uh, values for the psi m o plus. But this is actually a uh, the uh, internuclear separation. This electron energy is calculated for one internuclear separation. If we have to calculate the electron energy for a different internuclear separation, we will get different energies. So, the whole thing is a negative energy and it is less than E 1 s and therefore, the psi m o plus leads to an E m o plus less than E 1 s. Also, if you look at the electron density, in the regions between the two nuclei, we will see an enhanced electron density. due to the overlap. Let us look at that again. We have the two nuclei here A and B. Well, maybe not this far. Let us uh, put the B a little bit closer. And we have the R A B separation. If the electron wave function is a 1 s A wave function, obviously uh, the 1 s wave function for this you remember with this as the 0 is going to go something like this. It is an exponential function. Okay. Now, the phi 1 s b is exactly the same, also has the same maximum is again uh, since the radius is uh, unsigned quantity, the electron wave function on, on a sphere of r is going to vary like this. For the phi 1 s b, the electron wave function is going to be something like this. Okay. This is positive, this is positive, all of all quantities are positive. Therefore, now if you 
you see the overall electron wave function C 1 plus C 2 plus uh, that phi 1 s A and phi 1 s B, the sum of the two is obviously like that increased value. So, if you take the square of that and calculate the electron density, you would see that the electron density due to the psi m o plus that term is going to be an increased quantity than the individual quantities. Okay. So, this increase in the electron density, which is uh, cylindrical in this case, because the coordinate dependence is only the internuclear separation, uh, all around that at any given point in a cylinder, uh, you see that uh, the electron density is going to be the same. Therefore, this is a cylindrical enhanced electron density and for obvious reasons this is called the bonding orbital, because now the electron is more likely to be found between the two nuclei for this particular molecular orbital and it is called the bonding orbital or psi m o plus. Okay. On the other hand, if we were to do the same calculation with the psi m o minus which is 1 by root 2 into 1 minus s. Phi 1 s a plus minus phi 1 s b. If you were to do this calculation, you recall that the integral that we did evaluate, the 16 terms that we evaluated by doing the first 8 and then multiplying the, the whole thing by 2, the integral that we evaluated is going to have 1 minus s and therefore, the corresponding quantities. So, let me go back and here all that we would have is E 1 s will remain the same, this will remain the same, but the integral j plus k by 1 plus s will change over to j minus k by 1 minus s. So, the answer would be if you calculate E for psi m o minus, the answer would turn out to be E 1 s plus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught or A b, which is a constant for this. Then what you will have is plus j minus k by 1 minus s. Okay. When you actually calculate this value using all the wave functions and uh, the integrals j and k you evaluate, you find out that the E psi m o minus uh, is always greater than the E 1 s hydrogen and therefore, this is a case in which the energy for this particular molecular orbital wave function is higher than the energy of the 1 s orbital and the electron density that you look at because of the minus sign, the electron density in the internuclear region between the two nuclei, the electron density is depleted from what would be the electron density due to either one of these 1 s orbitals alone. So, if you draw this picture on the wave function. A and B exactly the same picture that you draw. If you choose the phi 1 s A with the positive sign, of course, the wave function is going to be like this. And if B is the phi 1 s B is with a negative sign, obviously, you are going to have the wave function come out like that and the wave function come out like that. And the sum of the two wave functions at exactly the midpoint, you see, it is going to be 0. Okay. This is 0 at this point. Therefore, 
is 0 at this point. And also the electron density, you will see that the value of the electron density at this point is 0 and the value of the electron density in any intermediate point between A and B is going to be less than the electron density due to the uh, nucleus A alone or due to the nucleus B alone. Therefore, the electron density is depleted. So, for obvious reasons, we therefore call this psi M O minus as the anti bonding against bonding. Call this as anti bonding or against bonding. it is of higher energy. So, these are some of the basic results that one looks at when you uh, study the hydrogen molecule ion closely. And where are we with respect to uh, the, the energy that we calculate? What is the experimental energy? Please remember variational principle tells you that the exact energy that you obtain for the system is always going to be lower than any energy that you calculate using any combination of wave functions except when those wave functions coincide exactly with the eigenfunction of the system, which in this case we know it is not. Therefore, you see that the experimental energies that we calculate that we uh, obtain from spectroscopy and the energies that we calculate for the psi uh, m o plus and psi m o minus as a function of the internuclear distance. The energy here is as we vary the nuclear distance, we calculate electronic energies for different nuclei, nuclear configurations. And then we find a minimum for the psi m o plus, we do not find any minimum for the psi m o minus and therefore, the picture that we have when we do this for E plus that is E psi m o plus. If we do that, the picture we have is if this is like the E 1 s, then what you have is as a function of R A B, the coordinate here is the internuclear separation R A B, you see that there is a minimum at some value of R, which we call as the equilibrium bond distance. If on the other hand, if we calculate the E psi M O and uh, uh, for the orbital uh, with the minus sign, if we do that E psi m o minus and we plot the energy as a function of R A B, what we get out is that never goes to a minimum. It is always higher than the E 1 s hydrogen energy and therefore, this is the anti bonding orbital energy, no bonding. This is the bonding. Orbital energy as a function of the uh, internuclear positions or A B. And the, the experimentally when we find out what the energies are, I do not have the experimental graph, but I will put those things in the lecture notes that you will see on the website. The experimental graph seems to be somewhere, uh, of course, you do not have a continuous graph for experiments, you know, you determine the uh, things spectroscopically. So, you have something like that. So, if you were to connect to this, the experimental minimum is lower than the minimum that you calculated using this phi 1 s a and phi 1 s b. Therefore, how do we now uh, try to get the best value that matches close to the experiment? Okay, we have choices. We chose the experiment, the, the basis function as phi 1 s a and phi 1 s b. Now, let us look at a simple logical factor and see whether we can do a variational calculation on that. With that, I will close this lecture. When you talk about phi 1 s a, you are talking about the wave function phi 1 s a at the position of the nucleus, I mean the electron which is R 1, okay, which is R 
A, that is the distance from the nucleus A. And you know that this is like E to the minus or A by the Bohr uh, radius. Okay. Uh, what do you call that or not? Okay. And there is a normalization constant. Phi 1 s b would be obviously the internuclear distance, uh, I mean the electron nuclear distances R b, it will be like e to the minus R b by R naught, the Bohr radius. This is with the assumption that when the two nuclei are uh, infinitely uh, far apart from each other, that these are the corresponding uh, limiting wave functions. But what happens if the nucleus one nucleus falls on the other, so that the H 2 plus becomes a helium plus. I mean let us forget the fact that the protons repulsion is going to be enormous etcetera, but let us assume that the R A B goes to 0 and therefore H 2 plus becomes a helium plus. This is an exactly solvable problem because you see this is a one electron system with a nuclear charge Z is equal to 2 and therefore the wave function is not any one of these, it is not a linear combination of any one of these but it is essentially going to be e to the minus 2 r by uh, a naught, the Bohr radius. Okay. So, therefore, in one limit it is e to the minus r, in another limit it is e to the minus 2 r. So, what should we do? Do a variational calculation, introduce a parameter called k which is an effective nuclear charge. So, you would rather write phi 1 s a not as e to the minus r a by a naught, sorry I think I have been using capital A naught, but a naught this is a standard symbol for the Bohr radius. Instead do not use this, instead use a parameter e to the minus k or a by a naught and minimize the energy that you get using that linear combination, minimize that energy with respect to k as a variational parameter. A is a variational parameter. This is very nicely done in the textbook by uh, Levine, quantum chemistry. I have an older version of the book, so I do not know the exact pages uh, in the current version, but this integral is calculated with this as a variational parameter and simple ideas are explained. So, there is room for us to do a slight uh, improvement in our calculation by introducing a variational constant. Therefore, you see that the methods that we have already learned are going to be implemented in the way in which we see the orbital energies to match with what we think should be the experimental uh, frequencies that we obtain. Experimentally you do not measure the energy, you measure the frequencies, but if you calculate the molecular orbital bonding and if you calculate the anti bonding orbital, the difference between the two is obviously the frequency that we are worried about in raising the electron from the lower orbital to the higher energy orbital and that difference should be matched with the experimental frequencies and then one back calculates these things. So, it is possible to do a variational calculus, a calculation on this and hydrogen molecular ion is one of the most thoroughly studied and most uh, very well documented uh, subject on the literature of chemical bonding. So, we will continue this uh, with any further additional data that you need uh, in the lecture notes, but in the next lecture I will talk about the hydrogen molecule and not hydrogen molecular ion that is two electrons. We will do it using a different method known as the balance bond method. Until then, thank you very much.